I saw the sign and it opened up my eyes. No, it didn't. It didn't. Signs don't open up your eyes to anything. Okay. So we have this mythology, right, that we've created within the manifestation world about um, looking for signs, finding signs, uh, you know, magic numbers, um, you know, looking for 111, uh, birds before landing, you know, BBL, whatever it is, we've created this sub system of beliefs where we're like, oh, that means I'm closer to my manifestation. No, you're not. Right now, I know it sounds like tough love and I'm not trying to actually come off that way, to be honest with you. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stop your mind from looking for signs. Because if you really truly believe in the power of your mind being the imagination that creates, because your imagination, by the way, isn't just your imagination. It's a multi-dimensional universe. Neville talks about that in his work, even in Out of This World, that's his book, right? He talks about how we're entering into a multi-dimensional universe, right? So if you want to use quantum theory and quantum physics, you can call that the multiverse, right? But how do you enter into it? Well, you enter into it here, okay? Well, when you enter into it, that's an, a universe that already exists. The way that Neville talks about it through scripture is that creation is finished, right? That means you don't have to even go in and create. You're a selector rather than a creator. You're selecting through your accepted beliefs that you normalize. Are you with me? So what you're doing is you're manifesting based upon a body of beliefs that you have accepted as true. And if you keep thinking of the imagination as something that is limited or it's what you think of when you think of a child imagining or you think of daydreaming, that's not the same. That is not the same as all. It is all powerful, all loving, all accepting, all celebrating, right? All meaning and purpose is found here. That's what you're doing. This isn't just going into your mind. This is why it's not solipsism, okay? Because solipsism says that you're just locked in your mind, all right? There's more to what the imagination is, and it's important for us to understand that and accept that as the first basis of truth. If you don't accept that, it's going to be extremely problematic to manifest anything, okay? Because all possibility exists in here, right? Again, just like in quantum physics, right? All possibilities exist until you start what? Observing. That means measuring what you are desiring, okay? And the more that you measure it, the more that you categorize it, okay? The more that you experience either the categories or you don't experience it at all. This is why the Apostle Paul says in Scripture, there's neither Jew, there's neither Greek, right? And he goes on this long list. That long list was not meant to stop there. It was basically meant to argue to the philosophers Categories don't exist. Categories keep you separate. Okay? Are you with me so far? So the more that you want to define your experience, all right, through categories, the more that you're going to experience the limitations of those categories. So if you're looking for signs, then you're looking for limitations. You're looking for categories. You're looking for objects that don't have anything to do or are, aren't related to your end. So what does the end mean for Neville in terms of manifestation? It means where would I be the day after? Where would I be six months after? Where would I be three days after? Right? So again, let's use this. Okay. So if you're trying to manifest someone to marry, right? Well, then would you, what, are you going to go out and look for wedding rings on the ground? Are you going to look for number sevens all over the place? And does that prove anything to you? Not really. All that is, is that you are still looking for something that you're supposed to already have in here. Do you get what I'm saying? You're looking for objects out in this world to help you embody the state that you should be inhabiting in here. Well, and I love the word inhabit because it literally means this is your home. Inhabit, within, right? The kingdom of God is within. The kingdom of God is not within numbers, crystals, um, bottles, um, um, palm readers, uh, the kingdom of God is not within any, in any of those things. That word within is from the Hebrew, right? And it means inside. That's what it means. Now, am I knocking you at all? Whatsoever? No. If you want to use those things, great. But just know that those will never manifest. Never. I don't care how old you get and whatever and how you can prove to me, those don't manifest. It is this in here, right? It is you... You, you manifest, 
That's all, right? Now, if you can somehow generate enough feeling-based energy to keep you in the state by looking at these numbers, go ahead and use it, but don't rely on it. Do you hear the difference? Like your reliance should always be on the imagination, okay? So at one point in the story and the relationship between Jesus and his cousin, John the Baptist, he says, you know, John, like John the Baptist, who represents us, right? Like the hairy man, right? And it's, and it's an old ancient metaphor for us, the outside self, okay? Because why? Look at, we're covered in hair, right? So it's a metaphor for the hairy man, our outside, our flesh, our ego, right? All of this kind of stuff. And he says, I must decrease so he can increase, Okay, so if you can honestly answer to me that all this BBL, looking for numbers, looking for signs, can actually help the inner man increase, then go for it. If you are doing it to help you quell some fears or doubts, that's not a great solution. Because you should always go in here to actually quell, and which means kind of like down-regulate doubts. Okay, so what do you do in the moment then? Well, what if you have a doubt? Well, use breathing techniques, use meditation, go for a run, distract yourself, go talk to a friend, do self-care. Whatever you do, commit to the process of not allowing doubt to have the last word, right? This is what Neville means when he says brazen impudence, okay? Not impotence, impudence, right? What it means is I am this and that's it. There's no other options. That means there's no magic numbers, there's no... Right, um, things floating in the sky, giving me a message. Okay, now let me let me close with this. That isn't to say that you can't use selective hearing or selective touching or selective seeing or selective feeling. Right, even in this world, as a way to get you into state. That means I'm only looking for things right that actually and interpreting events to only mirror what this new person would be if they had everything they wanted. So then I'm now reacting, but do you hear the difference? I'm now the person who is the person who has everything they want, reacting and now interpreting things, okay? But that person doesn't need to interpret numbers. That person doesn't need to interpret objects. That, that person doesn't need a palm reader, whatever it is, because you already have what it is. So then you start interpreting things, but that's very different from saying I need or am, is this a sign or right? All of those kinds of things will keep you in the state of lack because you're constantly looking for them and you're constantly wanting to generate more and more and more and more and more, right? Are you with me? So again, signs don't manifest. Don't look for them. Always give your Give yourself the confidence of having it in here. How do you do that? Repeat, rinse and repeat, repeat, repeat. You doubt, repeat, you doubt, repeat, you doubt, repeat. Are you with me? So again, don't look for signs. You are the sign. That's all that you need.